I love that. Thank you, Michael. Thank you. Gunnar, Lene, and then Kim. Hi, I'm Gunnar Mensch. I live on the Big Island of Hawaii. My connection to Oregon is my daughter and my five grandkids all live there just outside of Portland and Tigard. And they used to live near Bend, where you guys are located. They were in, uh, in Redmond. And uh, we just connected through Lene and uh, people I know. And it just, uh, in fact, I've been up to Lene, visit her at her home too, as well. And I in hope you're your, working. And what did you drive up here, Gunner? I drove my pink pig Porsche. <laughs> uh, if I can explain, here, wait a second. Uh, I'm gonna do this. I, I know, here. I have a pink 1986 wow. Porsche 944 Turbo. Wow. Now, several things I got to say. I created this car as a, um, a, a tribute car to one that Porsche ran at Le Mans back in 1971. Okay. Called, and they called it the Pink Pig. Uh, so my stroke, I'm coming up on my seventh anniversary on April Fool's Day. <laughs> Seven years ago. Yeah, no joke. No joke at all. Okay. <laughs> On April Fool's, I had two massive strokes. The brainstem stroke that should have killed me and took out my entire left side, which is still recovering and getting better all the time. And the second stroke was the occipital lobe stroke that took out the vision in my right eye. That came back in about six months. So it was six months without being able to drive or anything else like that to get my strength back up, to get everything working, and to be able to drive my, old, my collection of old Porsches that I have. So I have driven this car now across country three times in the last four years from side to side, east to left. And I've also driven up and down the east and west coasts with this car. Fabulous. And a year ago, last November, I went even down to Florida, saw my mom, um, and it was it was quite something she she modeled with the car if you will at 93 years old 92 <laughs> but she just passed away this last week oh she passed away the yes, day sorry. after my i turned 69 on the 16th and she died the next day on the 17th so it's been a rough week it's i've had a lot of challenges yes so, good to see all you guys and good to see you. You the, the next person and my wife inspires me all the time. We've been together for over 21 years now. Thank you, Gunnar. Thank you. Yeah, our prayers for your mom, for sure. Indeed. Thanks. Renee, and then Kim, and then Randy. Afternoon. I think I'd probably know most of you. I'm Lonnie Hunter, sitting here in wonderful Bend, Oregon. It looks like our snowstorm is gone. Yay. And I just enjoy all of you so much. And I'm really thrilled that Hattie is joining us. So when we get to uh, we get to her, she can tell you a little about her project. And as I think about joy, um, actually, every day I pick a word of the day and just a little game I play with myself. I may have mentioned it before, and I try to come up with a word that's kind of inspiring and means something. Um, to me personally, today my word was joy, but I would like to tell you who brings me so much joy, and that is our own Kim O'Kelly. <laughs> I met Kim within, we had our strokes two weeks apart, we didn't know each other, we met by not real accident, but we met and we have been on this journey together for eight years we've cried together she knows when i'm down she just knows and she just brings me so much joy i really want to acknowledge the healing that she has brought to me mm. oh gosh <laughs> yeah. 
Thank you, Lene. Thank, Thank you, Lene. You know, it's funny when I was thinking of joy, I, I was looking at your face and, you know, of course, I think my husband and my daughter, of course, in my life, my family, but really our friendship does bring me a lot of joy. You know, the fact that this group and just the fact that we, you know, I've had two people call, uh, uh, email me in the last two weeks about seeing my um, video or reading my story and saying they were inspired. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it is such a beautiful thing. And when I see you, I feel we are so blessed. You know, there's an incredible blessing of stroke. We all know the tragedy. We all feel it every day. We all meet it every day, you know, but there's something about the joys and the blessings that are so incredibly important for us to keep our consciousness on. And you bring me joy too, Lane. And I thank you for our friendship, truly. Thank you, Kim. Thank you you so brought much. me to tears, honey. <laughs> <laughs> well, we all know they're always on right in our eyes, right? That's part of stroke. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm. Kim, would you like to tell everyone where you're zooming I'm in? I'm sorry. No, I'm that's zooming right. in from my bedroom. <laughs> I, I wanted to get on the treadmill. I did all my exercises already today, but I really wanted to get on the treadmill and I thought it would be too distracting and then I'd have to take my face off. And, you know, so I said, you know, I'll just wait and do that after. Um, but I am zooming in from Bend, Oregon. Thank you, Kim. Also you, an inspiration Holly. for me, for sure. Uh, and Randy and then Joyce. And then Jeff and Paige. All right. I'm Randy Kernis. I live in Hampstead, North Carolina. And I am here based on learning or uh, meeting Michael. So uh, that's changed a lot for me. Huh. And uh, you all are uh, much better speakers than I am. Um, I'm almost 12 years post. The fact that I have um, aphasia really does suck, but you know it's gotten better, and I'm able to speak way better than I was able to, um, you know, ten years ago or five years ago. Gets better all the time. Um, and the thing that makes me feel um, really good about the joy in my life is my wife, obviously. So she has um, been on top of me. Uh, whether I've done good things or bad things. So it, it goes on, it moves on. So. Yes. Thank you, Randy. Thank you. You're welcome. Joyce, Jeff. And yes. I'm um, uh, um, Joyce and I'm from uh, Portland, Oregon. And um, uh, for friends of me, Joy, are my two sons. We have a very small family. So uh, uh, for me, Joy, every time I see them. Oh, um, you're here. One lives in her river, and one of those four minutes away. <laughs> oh, that's so great! Thank you. I love it. Thanks, Joyce. We have Jeff, Paige, Diane, and then John. There we go. I'm really gonna go. Oh, you you try, and then I'll say what you say. Your sister. Say your sister. Okay. He so this is Jeff. I think you're starting to say that he lives in San Francisco. We're all in San Francisco. And someone that brings him joy is his sister. He has two sisters though. So maybe maybe he's playing favorites with one of them. I don't know yet. I'll have to dive into that more. <laughs> and then of course, my name's Paige. Um, also live in SS. I'm actually from Chicago, but I love to see all the North Carolina representatives. My uh, parents live in Charlotte, North Carolina. Um, my fiance's family's from uh, Wake Forest area, so very familiar with Winston-Salem. 
but the person that brings me joy is my mom, Patty. She's always has a smile on her face, always laughing and just makes the best out of every opportunity. So yeah, that's us. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Paige. Diane, Steve. Okay, hi. Um, I'm from New York. Uh, I don't know what I was gonna say. Um, I also had a brainstem stroke in 2019. Um, and I'm, now I have a grandson. He's gonna be two years old this May. And sometimes I get to see him on like this, through, a lot of times through, um, now he wants to call me and stuff. So that brings me joy. Oh, I love that, Diane. Diane, we're so glad that you joined us. Thank you. Yeah, I think I got mixed up when I saw three o'clock. Um, that was your time, not my time. <laughs> <laughs> it is confusing. We have so yeah, many time zones. A lot of times I'm out at this time, so I'm not available. Okay, well, I'm glad that you were able to join us today. And thank you. Yeah, and I'm looking to just meet more people because, you know, I need, you need a lot of support sometimes. And I don't, you know, I don't know, when you get to be my age, a lot of your friends are gone and stuff. So, yeah. I don't know. Absolutely. Well, we're yeah. glad that you found us. Thank you. Yeah. John. Yeah, well, welcome, Steve. Diane. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. Let's see, John, Steve, and then Victoria. I am uh, John Burdett. I live pretty close to Smith Rock, mm -hmm. outside of Terrebonne, an unincorporated part of the county. Oh. Um, what made me happy this morning? My two puppies actually went and pooped outside instead of in the heat. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah, it's so nice. <laughs> and, and it pleased my wife too. I got for both of us. That was really awesome. So thanks, Rat. Oh, I love that, John. The little joys. Yes. Sometimes our poop. Yep. Steve, Victoria, and then Ralph. Hi. Um, I'm Steve Boatwright. I live in Mid Oregon. And uh my wife, she's the best. So that makes me very happy, and and I have a great life, even though it's, you know, I had a stroke, and I'm still pushing, and, and I still have a lot of goals. Good for you, Steve. Yeah, Steve. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> Hi, I'm Victoria Moran, and I actually work at Sacred Heart Medical Center. Um, in um, Springfield, Oregon. I live in Eugene, so I keep saying Eugene, Oregon, but I work in Springfield. And my mom had a stroke in 2010, and I was her caregiver for about two and a half years before she passed away. And then I got this job during COVID, and um, someone told me about your group, and I thought I would join you and maybe learn more good things to learn. Um, oh, well, Molly, it brings me joy. Molly, oh. can I can I um, chime in here real quick? I want to let I want to let Victoria know that uh, the good people at Riverbend in Eugene saved my life after my stroke in uh, July of 2020. I was life flighted in from Reedsport, Oregon, on the coast, uh, where I had an emergency thrombectomy at Riverbend, and I got my acute care after stroke at your facility so god yeah. bless all of you oh i love that chills all the connections thank you hey did dr wilder do your thrombectomy do you remember uh dr isuwani oh shwani oh okay all yes. right good yes. saving lives nice i awesome. did i did some follow-up with uh, dr wilder yes he was great yeah I love that. I love that. I was at, at UCSF where Paige and Jeff are. So there was some connection there too. 
Let's see. So Ralph and is it Reese? Reese Hanley. We'll go with Ralph first. Okay. I'm assuming that we're talking about what brings us joy. <laughs> yes. Well, um, I'm Ralph Quirky. I'm in Bend, Oregon one year today. I moved here one year ago. Um, what brings me? Brings me joy is that. And I've been here for a year. I've got three grandchildren. I've got you guys. I've got SAO. And I've, I've got a fantastic job of a boss that cannot be surpassed. I've got a, and I hate saying using the word boss with her, but, and then I have uh, the radio code. What? Ralph, will you tell well, us I, a little about the radio? I'm not sure everybody knows. Uh, yeah, let me get through this, then I'll tell you that. Um, seven and a half years ago, I never thought I'd be out of a walker or a cane. And what happened up here, I'm walking, I'm running, I'm doing lifting weights. I'm part of the 305 Club, which is <laughs> the leg presses. I'm at physical therapy with Steve and Lene. We're pressing 305 pounds. <laughs> hey, you guys want to join our club? <laughs> yeah, there you go. Hey, Ralph, I'm in that club too. I'm pressing. It's fabulous, isn't it? It is. It, it is. It yeah, is. Great club. If I, I don't think if I would have, if I had not come up here, I would have been where I'm at right now. I never would have thought after five or six years of trying and trying and failing and failing that I would have been walking and doing the things I'm doing. So that's what brings me joy is being here for this year because it's changed my life. As far as the radio, um, it's called Stroke Warrior Radio. Jim and I started it for, from two stroke survivors, four stroke survivors. What we're doing is we're getting as much content as we can from as many places as we can and I like the way Jim described it last week. We are going to become the, the Google for stroke survivors. We are going to have information in one place that you can go to through our website. And Jim, by the way, our app is free. So I started designing that uh, through an app, uh, through our radio station. And we'll be broadcasting 24 hours a day. We've got stuff from Stroke Forward, Strength After Stroke, Molly's doing a program for us. Uh, Lene's going to do a program. Jim and I are going to do a program, The Bearded Bashers. That's our weekly. <laughs> that's going to be our weekly op-ed. And we're going to talk about anything and everything. <laughs> Kim's, Kim's consented to do, do some stuff. I mean, we've got some fantastic programming from all over the country. Uh, and if the, you have anything uh, that you'd love to contribute of your podcasts or anything you do i'd love to have it i'll just upload it we're going to be a funnel of information to one place that people can get information and help them get the year i've had in their <laughs> daily life yeah yes one year ralph you have made waves for sure oh, wow man. thank you for sharing thank you and then is it hattie Hattie Reese, is that right? I'm going to turn my video on, even though I'm home in bed recovering from uh, COVID. Oh. Uh, but um, I'm happy to know about this group. Lene, thank you for the invitation. Um, I, uh, I lost my mother to stroke when I was 15 years old. And she was under immense stress. And I, I'm interested to know your stories. But I started a project 17 years ago called the Right Care Initiative, which is now housed at the UC Berkeley School of Public Health. And what we do is we uh, provide free medical education from world experts on better stroke care mm -hmm. and stroke prevention. So our next uh, stroke program will be on May 8th 
we run something called the Virtual University of Best Practices um, through Zoom. Mm -hmm. We used to, I used to, I think of the amount of stress I was under before Zoom is it, I just look back and think, thank God I didn't have a stroke because I was running forums in four different major metro areas wow. per month. And so what I would do is I would gather and, and I would encourage you to consider linkages with the health system. So what, what I, um, my, it's hard to talk about 17 years of work quickly, but essentially our forum is primarily for teaching physicians and health systems uh, the current science. I mean, the hard thing to just really realize is that so many people didn't get the excellent care that you all obviously got because you're survivors. And so what we try to do is speed the adoption of the clinical best practices and, and um, really encourage people before they have a heart attack or stroke to know their numbers, get their coronary artery calcium scan done. Most people don't know about that. Um, once you've already had a stroke, I'm sure your medications are optimized, but for people, so we have a current test that the, um, the astronaut were, was developed by ast for astronauts to make sure that when they're up in space, they don't have a cardiovascular event. It's used in the military, it's used in executive physicals. But the fact is most people don't know about it, don't get it. And um, it's about $200. I call it the mammogram of the heart. I'm working on the federal government to try to get them to change the policy so that it will become a standard screening at age 45. I think everyone here who had a stroke was over age 45, but about 1% of oh, no. <laughs> oh. oh, I was 21. <laughs> oh my goodness, you had a stroke? Um, yeah, yeah, major stroke. I was in a coma for eight days and I oh. lost everything. Well, I need to know you. I was in a coma for nine days, not related to a stroke when I was in my 20s. Wow. Not expected to live. And, yeah. um, you know, so the miracle of life is that you can help other people. You have, you know, once you've been revived, mm -hmm. that there, it's really important to have a purpose. And uh, I feel so blessed to have had 26 states over 900 participants in 15 countries uh, participating in our Zooms uh, this last year. So I am um, so grateful for all of our volunteer physicians who teach. So on May 8th, every May, we have a special program for women's cardiovascular. And I'll, this is not an advertisement for the Right Care Initiative. All of our resources are free to the public. I raise funds to keep the program going. Uh, you'd think I would know my website. It's, it's <laughs> our email for our, that our students read is rightcare at berkeley.edu. And our website is, I think it's rightcare.berkeley.edu. I can pull it up. But anyway, we have lots of free resources, including we wrote um, a seven page brief that for the state of California uh, highlighting that cardiovascular disease strikes women at very young ages. And it's just a complete mis, it's misinformation in our culture that, you know, a lot of young women have their strokes and heart attacks dismissed and they don't make it. But already by age 35 to 45, it's the number one killer of women, uh, far uh, greater than uh, breast cancer or cervical cancer, the things that you regularly screen for. So I really believe that we should be doing the screening that finds the subclinical atherosclerosis. It's very, very unlikely that any of you would have had your strokes 
if at age 45, you would have gotten the screening called the coronary calcium score, because if you have calcium in your coronary arteries, which is found by a simple heart CT scan, um, 200 bucks at Stanford, I don't know what it is elsewhere. Some, some places charge you an arm and a leg, but it's gotta be something that, that maybe all of you can work on in your communities to make sure that these are available at a reasonable cost. It's a quick test. What's it called? What's the heart the test? It's called the heart CT scan. And you think, well, if it's a heart CT scan, what does that have to do with stroke? But what it shows you is whether or not you have the thing developing called, uh, it, it used to be called hardening of the arteries, but the um, uh, formal name is subclinical, in other words, not showing symptoms, atherosclerosis. So if you have subclinical atherosclerosis, um, you need to be on preventive medication, get your LDL, I would say really, if it's high, if your coronary calcium score is high, you need to get the LDL less than 50. We have lots of modern medicines to do that now. But I hope you're all on statins. I hope you're all taking your blood pressure every day. <laughs> During COVID, it was shocking. My blood pressure went up so high because I, I am kind of compulsive about testing my blood pressure because of what happened to my mom. And my normal blood pressure, like today it's normal, is like 117 over 77. But during COVID, I took my blood pressure and it was 198 over, I don't know what, but I was like, what in the world? I've never had such a high reading. So be really careful not to get COVID people. It can cause strokes. So anyway, I could just talk all day, but thank you for uh, having this support group. And, and of the stroke survivors, I know they just do better and better the more they try. Um, mm -hmm. One of my supporters is Chuck Tennisgetter, who who introduced me to Lene, mm -hmm. and um, you would never know he had a stroke. And he's like seventy something, and he's um, he's just a powerhouse of a guy, running multiple companies and so forth. So don't don't get discouraged. Just um, stay focused on your mission, and uh, eat a lot of green leafy vegetables. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Hattie. Thank you. Nice Thank to you. meet you all. And what important what work. What's your name? Who's talking? Who says stroke awareness? Or oh, I haven't. I am Molly. Nice to meet you. Let's see. Molly? I just changed the name here. I'll Molly figure that out. Molly and Hattie are two of the only people you know who were in comas in their twenties. I think. <sighs> so isn't that a neat, neat uh, coincidence that now we've met? Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Hattie. Thanks for all the information. And it looks like Victoria put your website in the chat. So if you guys want to learn more or contact Hattie, uh, her, her website is in the chat. Um, and then Ralph also added a little bit in the chat about, um, about the radio. So actually today, I wanted to talk with you guys a little bit about the radio show also. Um, Ralph asked me to do a show and I thought, mm, I don't know if what I've got to, you know, to add on a, a regular basis. But one morning last week, I was sitting and it came to me. For the past 16 years, I've been working with people. They've come to my office and said, I want to tell my story. And what would happen is we would meet once or twice a week for about a month. And I would listen to them talk through what they wanted people to know. And I helped them formulate a 12 to 15 minute talk, help them organize it and polish it, et cetera. And so what I hope to do moving forward is to create space for you, for people within the stroke community to tell a story, their story to the stroke community and beyond. I think that there's a lot of wisdom in this room. There's a lot of wisdom within the community. Um, 
and this this is more from the reflective side of things like the life reflection spiritual perspective um it sounds like there are a lot of radio shows that that Ralph has pulled together on the science behind things but I think that each of us have a very different perspective and have learned different things about life so um, if you're interested in being a speaker and creating a 12 to 15 minute talk, kind of like the one that I gave in January, um, from your perspective, then send me an email, please. And I'm happy to start working with you to formulate that. And you could deliver it on the radio show, but it's also something for you to use in the future. I, I know that a lot of times people ask me, tell me about your experience. What did you learn? And I never know where to start. So this could be something that you could share with a group of people um, beyond the radio show also. So I'm going to write uh, my email in the chat. And you're welcome to email me if you're interested in, in, in doing this. Uh, Ralph said, can I be the first one? So Ralph and I are already working on one. So that's <laughs> exciting. Um, so that's one thing. That's Another thing is these. Um, these talks generally have a life lesson. So I want to hear from you. What is some life lesson or some wisdom that you gained that you didn't necessarily have before? What's the first thing that pops into your mind? So take a moment. We won't, we'll let everyone think in silence for a second. What's one major thing that that you have learned or a perspective shift um and once we all have something go ahead and put your hand so once you have someone something somehow let me know that you have something we'll wait <laughs> for everyone maybe put your hand up like this because you got his up it's like Michael's got I, an idea. Yeah. And you know, uh, Molly, I think we did. Did we introduce Jim Patterson? We did. He was the very first. Jim, do you want to uh, introduce yourself again? You're pretty important. Memories. No, I, 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 I'd prefer just to leave it as is. Okay. <laughs> we know he loves his wife. His wife brings him joy. All right. Good yeah, job, I love Molly. that. Okay. When you yeah. have a life lesson, maybe one sentence to share about something that you learned because we we don't have that much time left but a sentence about something that you learned once you have an idea go ahead and show me somehow that you're you have michael okay uh, mine is a, probably a little bit longer than one sentence but uh i wanted to share with everybody that believe is now so got its own support group um once a month, uh, I know I copied Lene and uh, Keith and I think Ben read. But anyway, what we're having is Believe Happy Hour. And it's just like it sounds. It's all about you can bring a spirit if you like. But the whole thing about Believe Happy Hour is we don't talk anything about stroke. <laughs> and so far, it's been very successful. We've had over 20 people each time. And uh, uh, I think you will really like it. And uh, we ran out of time both times. Last time we talked about music memories. And we had a couple that were 85 and 84, all the way down to age 42. And just like Molly, she probably doesn't know what a eight track is, but uh, it was in <laughs> all how you know she is. We have a couple that had seen F Frank Sinatra and Elvis live in New York, and uh, so anyway, uh, as uh, one person said, if you mention stroke you got to take a shot of tequila. <laughs> uh, so anyway, um, I'll send that out. It will probably be in about two weeks, but it is really a lot of fun. Uh, I know for y'all, 
we have it at 4.30 Eastern time. So it's 1.30 your time. I love that. Thank you, Michael. Thank you. Thank you. That's a very important thing that there's a lot more to life in addition. So thanks for telling us about that. How about life lessons? And again, this doesn't have to be specifically from your stroke, but maybe something that occurred after your stroke that you have a different perspective now. Joyce, go for it. I'll do this in one sentence. <laughs> ne negativity takes a lot more time than positivity. <laughs> Thank you, Joyce. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that true? Kind of productive. So true. So it's true. hard to uh, to change, though. Mm. Yes, yes, but um, I change. I change. I, I used to be a very negative, pessimistic person, but it's just my stroke. I I changed. Mm. I, I thought. I often thought that having a stroke mean. Uh, the, uh, the reason I changed is you haven't had a stroke in order to cha change. Uh, a stroke was so bad, but it, uh, I don't really think that way. You have to have a stroke or um, uh, uh, brain, uh, um, uh, uh, traumatic brain injury to think that way. Mm. So uh, I'm glad I had the stroke. <laughs> I, I should. <laughs> I, I don't believe I said it, but thank you, Joyce. Thank you. That's profound for sure. Thank you. It thank seems you. very simple, but there's a lot to it. Thank you. Jim, go for it. Well, I know one of the life lessons that I am focused on now is I am so grateful that I had a solid spiritual foundation prior to my stroke. I, I just believe it is so important. You know, if you wanna put a relationship with a higher power into perspective, let the crap hit the fan in your life and then realize, you know, you ask yourself the question, what would I have done without that piece of my life? What would I have done without that spiritual connection and that relationship with God. Mm -hmm. I can tell you that in my, in my experience, I know that because of the dark places that my mind went and the tricks that the evil one tried to play on me during my period of vulnerability, I, I, I may have considered some things that were very hurtful to others in my life. Mm -hmm. So the life lesson is don't wait, you know, reach out and find that spiritual connection. You never know <laughs> when it's going to play a huge role in your life. Thank you, Jim. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Powerful. Kim. When we wake up in the morning, and we, if you've lost part of your body and you step out, or if you've lost your speech and you begin to speak, you meet your disability. And then you have a choice. So the life lesson is we all have choices. We have a choice to go down with the consciousness of disability and the sadness and poor me and why did this happen? And it's, it's a terrible tragedy and, and, and that's valid. I, I am not saying it's not, but what I wanna say is that if we meet that and we say, well, if I look at what I can do, what I have, not what I don't have, that's the life lesson. Just live in what you have, not what you don't have. We have to work on our weaknesses, but we have to live in our strengths, mm. if that makes any sense. Makes a lot of sense. Thank you, Kim. Thank you. Ralph? Um, mine, mine's kind of a crude way to say it, but I had to learn that 
if you have one foot in yesterday and one foot in tomorrow, you're in a perfect position of urinate on today. <laughs> yeah. So, my, and very crude, Ralph. You were right. Yeah, I'm sorry, but you know, I had to learn not to live in the past. I had to stroke that over. I I had to not worry about what's going on tomorrow. What am I going to do to make things better? And be open to listening to other people. The way I was raised, you don't listen to other people. You're right. Period. Hmm. You know. Now I now I open and listen. And that, that's, I guess, my explanation. There you go. <laughs> Beautiful. Thank Beautiful. you, Ralph. Crude but effective, Ralph. Hey, I got the point across, right? <laughs> and brother, Loud and clear. Here are your I think one of the lessons that I've learned, there's been so many lessons, and I think we all can say that. But one of the things that I've really learned is to celebrate the little victories you know, I don't know that I did that before the stroke. I think we took everything for granted. Now, um, I think it was Ralph made reference to the to the leg press. I have to tell you, I was over the moon the day that I did this 305. Now that sounds like a lot, but I think most of you could probably do it. And, but I think learning to celebrate those little victories in whatever they manifest in our life. It might be stroke victories, it might be with our family. I think that's a lesson I've learned. And the other lesson I think I've learned is, you know, most of the things that I used to think were a big deal, they're not a big deal. Yes. <laughs> now having a stroke might be a big deal, but you know, the things that we used to get worked up about, you know, really most of them are are not that big. We have to keep them in perspective. Yes, thank you. Amen thank you. to that, Lonnie. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Thank you, Lene. Let's see, Randy or Diane or Steve or John or Victoria or Jeff Page. Steve, go for it. Oops, you're on mute. Uh, Lonnie, when I found out you did 305, <laughs> you challenged me. <laughs> so I did 315. So now you Woo! got a new goal. Okay? You got a new goal. Now, is this, is this I both love it, legs, guys? I want to know, is this both, both legs together yes. or one? Two legs. Two legs. I did four legs. <laughs> I did uh, two legs. Um, How many reps? <laughs> How many reps, Steve? How many? I did uh, five. Mute, five. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay, so I got to do six this afternoon. <laughs> yeah, it's so fun, right? Yeah, I, did six, that, and, I did a hundred and five on just my left leg. Wow. Really? That blew my mind. Just left leg. And that was what, yeah. 10 pounds? I started. <laughs> at, Just kidding. I started at um, 35. All right. Took it up to 105. That's I know. Awesome. It's huge. Yeah. It's huge. That's great. That's so <laughs> right? fun. It's so awesome. life lessons, every one of you. Uh, <laughs> we can all relate to everything everybody said. And uh, I've always been a go get them positive guy. Even when I was in the hospital and they told me I, they were surprised I made it. I said, well, I have a lot of reasons. And they just kind of looked at me. But, you know, I, I just kept going, but I've always been like that. But um, one, one important thing, we all need each other, every one of us. Mm. You know, we're all different. We all grew up different. We all have different beliefs or different, whatever it may be, but we need each other. That's it. Thank you, Steve. You're right. You're right. Absolutely. Hi, Ramona. Welcome. Good afternoon. Hi. Where are you calling in from, Ramona? I'm calling in from Prineville. Awesome. Love it. We're sharing a, a life lesson, something that we've learned. <laughs> 
Uh, well, I'll have to think on that. Sounds good. Sounds good. <coughs> see, Randy or Diane or Joyce or Victoria. Oh, I want to put a shout out to yeah. teachers, teachers, D E T O U R S. Teachers is a, a program, a radio program that uh, is so amazing. I'm a host, but not because I'm a host. <laughs> I said it wrong. I'm a host, but not because I'm a host. It is amazing. And amazing because the one of short of it, uh, Mark Flat, Mark Flat, do you know him? Uh, he's from Pennsylvania. And um, um, he's a, uh, what is it? Um, demonstrate how p people who have strokes or traumatic brain, uh, brain injuries could achieve many things. So uh, I'm a host and uh, I, I will put him, uh, look it up, teachers. Thank you. Thank you, Joyce. And let's see, how do we spell that one? A D E T O U R S. Teachers. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Okay, good people. Let's see. So I had oh. one piece of homework from our, our dear friend, Keith, and we haven't done it yet. And we only have eight minutes left. He wants to know from you guys, what type of speakers you want moving forward. So, so, uh, which people would you like to come speak for? I think it's a like a 10 to 15 minute talk that someone and a, someone comes in and speaks to your group. And he wants to know who you want to hear from or what type of information you want to hear. So if you have a moment, go ahead and put that in the chat. And um, that way we'll have a list for him. But that was my only homework <laughs> and we haven't done it yet. Can I, can I say it because I cannot type yeah, please do. Okay. Um, what I'd be personally most interested in are accounts of transitioning to post-stroke life, where you live, how do you support yourself, all those kinds of things. Because I'm, I'm going through my own tr transition myself, and so I could use any inspiring stories or even just kind of information about how, how, how it's been done. I love it. Thank you, Robin. Yeah, I Does think I'm kind wanna... of stuck there, too. Because yeah. I retired when I had my stroke. I didn't want anybody to want anything from me. And now I just can't move forward, really. It's a great topic, Robin and Diane. Yeah. Thank you. And, you know, yeah. the only thing I'll add is I think we're always in that. I know I find I kind of go into sort of plateaus and valleys, and then I'll step out there. And make more. You're right progress. that stroke challenges you. I mean, mm -hmm. every step of the way, it's it's uh, it's like learning how to be a human being all over again. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. And Robin, before your stroke, you were working on a PhD, I think. That's right? correct. Yeah. I mean, I te technically still am, but I mean, it's uh, I I'm still trying to figure out how to, how to even do that. Yes, it's worth you figuring it out, Robin. Never give up. Yes. Thank you. In my, in my book, Robin, you've already got your PhD in how to survive traumatic event. Well, I appreciate that, yeah. Absolutely, in life. I just wanted to add one thing since we're sharing something. Um, one thing that I really kind of discovered for myself is that I don't want to spend too much time focusing on like when I have a bad day that I just try not to spend too much time feeling overwhelmed by that because I have bad days and then sometimes you just have a bad day for no reason but you don't want to spend too much time just you know kind of focusing on that right. it's easy to get kind of mired down with you know bad days Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, Ramona, I have just one quick comment. Many of you have been on our support groups where you've seen um, Jeff Babb speak. Jeff Babb has had two strokes. 
He's the man that invented the advent chair, which is a wheelchair to go down in places like the Grand Canyon. I was having coffee with um, Jeff a few years ago, and I think I was having probably maybe what you call a bad day. And I looked at Jeff and I said, Jeff, do you ever have bad days? And he looked at me and he said, Lonnie, I have bad moments. Right. But I don't let it turn into a bad day. Yes. That's good advice. Me uh, too. Ramona, uh, I'll get on a little bit of Jen Patterson. If I have a moment, as Lone said, I don't ever have a day. If I have a moment, I just thank God or give me, me a second chance. And that's all it takes. And I smile again and I'm happy and I don't have any more problems. Mm. Amen, Batman. Amen. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Thank you, Michael. That's a really important question and, and a topic, Ramona. Thank you. Because it's clear for all of us. Molly, since we have a couple of minutes, will you tell everybody your story briefly? My story, let's see, I was 21. It was 18 years ago. And um I, I, it, I had a, let's see, a clot the size of my pinky and the sinus straight, and I bled into both hemispheres. And, um, and as I said, I was in a coma and they transferred me from um, a hospital in the Bay Area in Los Gatos up to UCSF after they weren't able to do anything else. Uh, and they did a medical trial on me up there. And I don't remember any of it really. Um, um, I moved in with my sister and my mom moved in with my sister and they um, helped me with the recovery and learning to, you know, walk and eat and go to the bathroom on your own, all that, all that stuff. Um, and neuroplasticity, right. And pushing, okay, yeah. um, that it's important. Um, my brain scans still show the, the, the gray, the dead parts, but, um, but my brain has rewired itself. Um, my mom was really, um, she pushed me a lot <laughs> and I am so <laughs> thankful for it. She pushed me lovingly. Um, she did range of motion with my body when I couldn't move my body. Um, so, um, I think that that was helpful. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, uh, I didn't once, once I didn't talk about it for a long time. And then I met Lene earlier this year <laughs> and I've done a deep dive back into it. Um, a lot of reading and writing and, and I'm thankful for the invitation, um, back into that part of my life. Um, uh, no accident, no virus. They're not sure they did, uh, a bunch of different tests on my blood. Um, the question from Hattie is what caused your stroke? Uh, they said hormones, uh, I was taking birth control at the time, but then they did, um, they did tests on the birth control and my, um, blood and they found no reaction. So they ruled out, ruled that out. So they said, iron deficiency and dehydration, which I think a lot of, um, females have, uh, hormones, iron deficiency and dehydration. So I'm not really sure, Hattie. Thanks for asking. Um, Ramona, thank you for, um, the suggestion. Is that Kobe Haynes for, for a speaker? Yes. Okay. He's also a chiropractor, but he has a wellness program uh -huh. and he just got, um, a certification in um, a new um, program that deals with folks that have Alzheimer's and dementia. Oh, wow. He does some really cool stuff. And he works extensively with brain and gut and, um, you know, things that he, he looks at um, the causes of those things and tries to find the root of the problem. Mm. That's important. 
Thank so you. Hattie Thank just you. put something in the chat that has been one of my biggest challenges is hydration. Water. And water, yeah. Absolutely, absolutely with, with the clotting. Can um, I just say one thing about that? And that is that most heart attacks, I'm not sure about strokes, happen within the, and they're very like two sides of the same coin. They happen within the first hour of waking and they believe it's because of dehydration. Mm -hmm. So a simple thing you can do to protect yourselves is drink a glass of water as soon as you wake up and mm -hmm. take some blood pressure. So mm -hmm. I don't mean to be a, a nag or anything, but <laughs> I just want you all to have a good- You're a good source of information. You're not a hat, uh, uh, you're not a nag. You're a good source <laughs> of information. But, all right well i feel well, blessed by each of you um, one thing molly um, yeah i just listened to a thing on drinking water and how important it was to you but uh for all of us getting older your body thinks you don't want as much water but you do <laughs> so uh they still recommend 64 ounces of water a day. That's a good point. That's eight, tough. Eight glasses of eight ounces. Yes. Eight. There we go. That's a good challenge. That's like the, the leg press challenge. Let's do it. <laughs> All right, good people. I love seeing you. Uh, I'm going to facilitate the stroke, um, let's see, the caregivers meeting. Uh, the first Wednesday of next month, I think it's the 5th at 3 p.m. Uh, East Coast time. So uh, if you know any caregivers that, that you'd want to join, please, please uh, give them our information. Thank you. Okay. Thanks for Thank sharing. Thank you, Molly. Thank you. Thank you, Molly. Yes, thank you. Thank Have you so much. Have a great day, everybody. Bye, Have everybody. a great day. Bye. Bye, everybody. Bye. Good job, Molly. Thank Bye, you. everyone. Thank Great you. job.